flesh started bleeding from inside and then the blood would just come under the skin so I was covered with blotches and and my feet they were becoming like dandruff and also after some time I started noticing my nails also started getting a fungal infection that it was just like all of a sudden we were not allowed to touch she had her special cup with tag these flowers I remember it and she wouldn't let us touch it she wouldn't let us use her spoon like if she was eating something and then you come and you're like oh mom can I taste she wouldn't let you and when the man of God prayed again the Lord touched me but that meeting I went asking the Lord I want you to touch me Lord and the Lord indeed did touch me and I was down for a very long time and I was feeling waves were coming through my body and I said what is happening and these waves like electricity kept it was actually like electric shock kept on going through me for a very long time and then when I finally stood up I just went I sat somewhere but after that meeting I never got sick again I never got sick again and then somebody on the radio station said if you know that Jesus healed you go back to your doctor I went to my original doctor and I walked in and he was very shocked to see me he said you're still there you're still here I said yes and he said, what can I do for you? He said, I want you to test for HIV. Instead. So he, he took my blood, a lot of it, took it to the lab. And then he be, I noticed he, he was getting agitated. He kept coming out of the lab, going back. <laughs> then he came out. Like then, something's wrong. <laughs> yes. Then he and took more kids and it was taking a very long time. He walked out with the treatment book and he opened the page and says, isn't this you? I said, yes, it is me. And then he went back, he came out again, he said, there's something I don't understand. And I said, it's okay, doctor, I'll explain. Just sit. The doctor sat down and I told him, it's me. But Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God, he has healed me of HIV AIDS. And the doctor said, it is true. He never doubted. The healing of HIV AIDS in this ministry has humbled the medical practice. What was declared as incurable. Forget it. You will always be positive. Has now turned negative. And there is no mechanism. I ate what? He poured thing on me or whatever. It was positive and now is negative. They came back and said, This is breaking news. Because it's not by works that he healed me, but it's by his grace and mercy. Sometimes I don't know what to say. <laughs>
Then the medical personnel took them through very, very many tests to the ultimate test of DNA PCR, which is also negative. Mm -hmm. My name is Dr. Nancy Umronji, and I work here at Tejaton University in the Department of Applied Community Development Studies. And um, I contracted HIV. I was actually confirmed positive in 2006, April. But before that, a couple of years before that, I was I started feeling very weak. My strength was just disappearing. And but I, I, I was guessing because everybody knows the kind of life they live and mine I had not led a very good life. I'd been careless. I was not leading a holy life. So what happened is I started getting worse and worse and I was always coughing, so I was always on antibiotics multivitamins and then my flesh started bleeding from inside and then the blood would just come under the skin so I was covered with blotches and and my feet they were becoming like dandruff and also after some time I started noticing my nails also started getting a fungal infection and they started changing color they became a different color it was very hard actually being a lecturer and knowing I was sick because you see as somebody with a PhD you're supposed to know you're supposed to, people look at you like somebody who's knowledgeable and how was I going to tell the students you know not to contact HIV AIDS and I was positive myself so teaching became very hard extremely difficult I didn't look forward to the classes anymore and I started avoiding people. You know, I started walking by myself because I always feared somebody might notice that I'm not well. I, like I would be teaching and then the world just starts turning black. So I used to tell my classes, you know, let me go see the doctor. When I feel better, I'll come and we'll have a makeup class. So that's one of the times I now went to this doctor and I said why don't you test me for HIV because I was guessing it's HIV AIDS because of the kind of life I'd led but I used to keep changing doctors so before any doctor would zero in I would change but this time I realized I'm dying now I have to face reality so I went to the doctor and asked for an HIV test and he was a bit hesitant because they prefer we go to the VCT because there is counseling and this was at the lab but I said no just test me I want to know what is troubling me so, so doctor you have the proof over there where she was um, pronounced positive can you show us please for the record it's documented that uh, Nancy, Dr. Nancy Omurongi uh, visited Nakuru Medical C uh, Center C Laboratories this was on 20th April 2006 and indeed HIV 1 and HIV 2 tests were done and the results here is that she was positive. This, the determine which is a highly sensitive kit was used and the standard diagnostic method. So when one turned positive it was actually confirmed with the standard diagnostic method which was the the standard uh, testing algorithm by that time. 
at that point the first thing that crossed my mind was regret the deepest regret i've ever felt because i realized my children were going to be orphans and it was because of my own fault usually when this patient come and they test positive in the VCT, voluntary testing and counseling centers, they're, they're usually at the shock, the first experience will be the shock that you mean I'm HIV positive, then what is there for my life? It's like it is the end of life for them. And it is quite devastating. It takes them time before they even get to now accept their status. And then they are taken through counseling that they now will have to live with the disease because according to the medical fraternity we don't have any cure for HIV and there's no way one person that has ever been tested HIV positive can ever be HIV negative and so that is the work the task the medical personnel we have the clinicians we have in helping them accept their status and now taking up the medication that we have just to help their immunity and to treat their uh, opportunistic infections so I made up my mind from that time to look for God because I, I, I thought to myself, you know, the life on earth, maybe if the, for those who live long, it's maybe a hundred years. But, and I realized that's passed me by. Even if I go on medication, I may not live as long as I was meant to. But I decided I don't want to miss eternal life because that one is forever. So I began to look for the Lord. And I would ask people, how do you find God? Because I had drifted so far from the Lord. How do you find the Lord? And the people would try to help me. But I was not finding God. I searched for Him. And at that point, I also started um, putting my life in order. I, start, I came to the university and I changed my records next of kin changed everything so that in the event that I wasn't there you know there would be no issues I started getting rid of things in the house which I thought my children wouldn't need and then in April my daughter she's there she had gone to university in January so I sent for her to come in April because I wanted to tell her but when she came I was unable to tell her because I thought here I am, you know, always trying to tell my children, live a holy life, be good. And I myself, I'm not living that kind of life. So I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. The child asked me, you know, what is it? He wanted to see me. I said, no, it's all right. She went back to college. So when I was looking for the Lord, I had two friends, good friends. One is Sabina. The other one is Jane. They used to come to my office, you know, in the in the faculty, we are just there doing academics. But I had realized a PhD cannot heal me. But fortunately, my friends, sometimes they would come. Maybe they are passing by. They tell me, do you know there's a prophet of the Lord in the land? I say, really? What is he saying? They say he's saying, repent from your wicked ways. Turn back to Jesus. You know, repent of your sins. Jesus is coming. And then... They would tell me. But one day, one of them came to my house. She pulled me out and said, I was living in Nakuru town then. She said, you people of Nakuru, you have not repented. She was from Joro. They had gone to a repentance meeting. She said, come and repent. And she dragged me out of the house, you know, she literally almost, and escorted me to the field where the meeting of the Lord was and left me at the gate. She didn't even come in. She said, you haven't repented. And she told me, go in. So I went in and I was very shocked. I was very shocked because there was so much peace. It was so different. And, and when the altar call was made, I received the Lord. And, and that's when actually things began to change. There's this meeting I went to in Kandui. That is in Bungoma. And then I thought, you know, the man of God was praying and saying, Diseases are leaving people. Make sure the Lord touches you before you, you leave the field. So I thought maybe the Lord may heal me. But when he prayed, other people were touched and they were falling all around me. But I didn't fall. 
So I thought the Lord Jesus had passed me by. So I started talking to the Lord and saying, Lord, why are you passing me by? And you know that this disease has no cure. Only you, Jesus, can heal me. And I was very sad. So I came back home. But what happened is when I went to sleep, I didn't notice any change. I woke up in the morning. I didn't notice any change. But when I was going to drink a cup of tea, I got the shock of my life. All the marks, all the blotches of HIV, they had disappeared. Mm -hmm. They had vanished. You know, so I was so shocked. I started looking at myself. All the people who've been healed, there is one common denominator. Okay. They appeared in the meeting of the Lord, where the prophet of the Lord was ministering. A few of them listened over the radio and they received their healing through the radio. So the common denominator is a prayer. And then I, I kept on going for the meetings. That was in 2006, there were several meetings. I kept on going to them. And every meeting I went to, there was a change. The first one, my skin. Then I went to a meeting in um, Cabernet. That was in um, was it September 2006. And there the Lord touched me and I felt as if there was cold, something cold like water going through my brain like cool and it happened the whole night until the next day and from that day I never got any more headaches because I used to get headaches until everybody was used to it. Even her friends used to come say, oh is your mom asleep? Yes. Oh, she has a headache, yes. The other children thought it is normal. And then she always was asleep. My friends, all my friends can testify that Zara's mom was always sleeping. Saturday, Monday, whenever they would come over, she'd be in her room. She just used to, used to shout, Hi, mom. And she'd say, Hello, girls. Food is ready. And that was it. Then I went to another meeting in Kericho. And that was in January 2007. And at that meeting, the prophet of the Lord said, he's going to pray and if you're sick, you touch the place that is sick. So I used to cough a lot and I couldn't sleep on one side. There was a problem with my lung, one of my lungs. So I touched my chest. And when the man of God prayed, we were thrown. You know, I was thrown sideways by a force. Mm. And when I got up, there was no more pain in my chest. The cough had disappeared completely, so the Lord healed me instantly of the chest problem in that meeting. And then from then on, so I was actually healed in the symptom by symptom. After that, I managed to go to the January, to the, that, after that January meeting in 2007, I went to the June 2007 meeting at a Fras stadium, but outside. And it was a mighty meeting. And when the man of God prayed again the Lord touched me but that meeting I went asking the Lord I want you to touch me Lord and the Lord indeed did touch me and I was down for a very long time and I was feeling waves were coming through my body and I said what is happening and these waves like electricity kept it was actually like electric shock kept on going through me for a very long time and then when I finally stood up I just went I sat somewhere but after that meeting I never got sick again I never got sick again so when did you decide to yes. go to the doctor yes I was actually a coward <laughs> I feared because I thought that what if I go and there is some virus yeah. I was not a brave person but one day I was reading the Bible and I read in Revelation, cowards will not see the kingdom of God. And then I said, no, I have to go. And then somebody on the radio station said, if you know that Jesus healed you, go back to your doctor. But this was now in 2008, in July. So I had no choice. I said, Lord, I'm so afraid, but let me go. I went. I went to the nearest VCT. And I looked so reluctant that the medical person there told me no you you can go away it's voluntary we we don't force you then i said no i want to know he said why he said i'm tired of being a coward i want to know the truth about myself so i was tested and when the results came out i was hiv negative and 
I asked him, "Can I? Am I allowed to pray here?" He said, "Yes." <laughs> and and I he said, "Pray anywhere." So I went to a corner and I knelt down, but yes, I was not. Yes, and I was not able to pray. I just said, "Jesus, you have taken me from the grave. Thank you." And then I went outside and I left, and suddenly the sky was blue. The trees were green, the leaves are green. I started noticing people. You know, I stopped noticing people. You had stopped living it, that is. I think so. Because even my students, when I used to teach, I used to, I didn't used to look at them. Because I used to feel so ashamed. But suddenly, people looked so good. I started greeting everybody <laughs> on the street. I was so happy. <laughs> then after that is when I went to. Now I went, I was brave now. I went to my original doctor and I walked in and he was very shocked to see me. He said, you're still there? You're still here? I said, yes. And he said, what can I do for you? He said, I want you to test for HIV. And he asked me, are you, what drugs are you taking? And I said, none. And then he was very reluctant to test me. But later he explained, he thought I was on herbal medicine. And he said, some of his patients would go and harbor. They look like they're improving, but when he tests them, they're still positive, HIV positive. But I insisted, so he, he took my blood, a lot of it, took it to the lab. And then he be, I noticed he, he was getting agitated. He kept coming out of the lab, going back. <laughs> then he came out. Like then something's wrong. Yes, <laughs> then he and took more kids, and it was taking a very long time. He walked out with the treatment book and he opened the page and says, Isn't this you? I said, Yes, it is me. And then he went back, he came out again. He said, There's something I don't understand. And I said, It's okay, doctor. I'll explain. Just sit. The doctor sat down. And I told him, It's me. But Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God, he has healed me of HIV AIDS. And the doctor said, It is true. He never doubted. When they come back, they go to the meetings of the Lord and they come back and they w insist we have to test them. It's usually such a hard experience for us because why would we test them when we already know and we have their files in, uh, with us? And these are patients that are already on HIV care, some of them are already on antiretrovirals. We know their HIV, HIV clinical status and clinical staging. And then they come and they want us to test them again that they have been prayed for by the prophet of the Lord in their meetings. But the shock is that when we do the testing, then they actually turn negative to the very highest level. One st uh, stunning thing is that we observe as clinicians that even their clinical presentation changes. The clinical symptoms that they had, the rashes, the black spots everywhere, you know, the the weight everything changes clinically also so it is also there's also clinical proof that these patients have been healed by the lord Majina yake ni Yusufu. Hivyo basi ni mimi binafsi niliyefanya uchunguzi wa virusi vya ukimwi. I did the malaria, yet malaria and the HIV was positive. Kwa hivyo nikafanya uchunguzi wa viini vya malaria, alikuwa na malaria lakini kando na hayo pia alikuwa na virusi vya ukimwi. So last week Kwa hivyo wiki iliyopita tarehe 20 Nancy came again. Nancy told me. Nancy akaniambia. Nataka tukupima. So when I draw the blood. Hivyo basi nilipotoa hiyo damu. Mimi ndiye niliyefanya uchunguzi huo binafsi. Sasa nilipofanya uchunguzi wa kwanza. Ilikuwa haina virusi. Somebody stand up for the Lord. The same doctor. Yule yule. He did the test. Yeye ndiye alifanya uchunguzi. And it was positive. Na ilikuwa na virusi vya ukimwi. And the patient disappeared. Na yeye huyo mgonjwa akapotea. The same doctor now. Daktari yule yule sasa. Did the test. Akarudia hiyo vipimo. And found negative. Na akapata hairipo virusi tena. Maybe if it cannot explain this. Sasa matibabu hayawezi kuelezea haya. Speak to the doctor of this country. Sasa 
mstari wa inchi hii This is media we have KTN Nation Standard everybody is here Sasa citizen KTN Nation TV there yes sit nini madaktari Kile ambacho naweza sema Maombi yanafanya kazi That is when the doctors were shocked and they did the re-exam, took the blood sample again. Some of them ran three times and then began to take the blood to several hospitals, began to call several specialists to look at this case. And so that is when we started seeing HIV healings coming to us. However, what I insisted on, because I knew that they had, the, the ground had been spoiled, by the false preachers, you know, the so-called so-called healers, you know. So I always insisted that if one tested negative with their own physician, they should take their blood sample to as many VCTs as possible, and also to several hospitals like referral hospitals, and then to blood banks where the testing is so stringent. And so when I gave that instruction, then finally doctors began to call me. Did you have to prove over there to show us that she is indeed negative? Yes, I've got the proof here. And it's so beautiful the way she's putting it because then there was even the healing of the heart there. When you start noticing people and greeting everybody, then it's, not, it's more than just healing of the, the body. This is now the healing of the soul. Now, here we've got uh, some document here from... Okay, we've got a document from Nakuru Medical Center Laboratories for Nancy Omurongi. This is the laboratory request sheet. And we have here that HIV-1 and HIV-2 are both negative. This is the same test kits that were done uh, that proved that she was positive way back in the two, 2006. This is determined and the standard diagnostic method. With the same medical clinic, the same doctors. And we, in fact, after that, she also went to the Aga Khan University Hospital. And she did a long ELISA, an antibody test. And the results are beautifully negative. When the Lord began to heal, when he began to heal people who are HIV positive, only later is when I understood that the testing is also very expensive. I know you can go to VCTs and test, but because this was now Jesus who was healed, there was need to prove it. You see that? Beyond any reasonable doubt. You see that? Mm -hmm. So eventually, I found out that there are other means of testing also, First of all, I found out that there is Unigold Bioline determine the antibody-based testing. And for your own information, those antibody-based testings have tests are very virus specific. And then I also found out that if one of them declares you to be negative, you don't have the virus. Or to be positive, you indeed have the virus. But I insisted on three just to replicate to see that it is consistent. Someone did not make a mistake, right? She did not stop there. She again... In fact, the doctor from, from the Nakuru Medical Center Laboratory gave a brief letter as a testimony of the healing that indeed she knows this, he knows this patient and this is a, phys a physician. She knows this patient that was called Nancy Omronji, that former patient. And on 21st July 2008, he actually uh, he wrote this that is to certify that the above named person came in my laboratory on 20th April 2006 for an HIV test which the result was HIV 1 and 2 positive you see today on 21st July 2008 I have also carried out the test for HIV 1 and 2 and it is negative both determine and SD uh, bioline standard diagnostic and they, they, they all gave the same results of negative. He assigned it and given his number in case one wants to confirm. We also have more results. This is from Nakuru Medical Center again. And from the Aga Khan Hospital, they also did an antibody that was negative. I'm looking for the DNA. Yeah, the DNA PCR test is here from the Aga Khan. She has done several, almost three times, DNA PCR. 
more than what is ever necessary actually and the dna pcr this is nothing was detected no hiv virus no antibody no antigen was ever detected um she's also gone to mp Shah hospital these are big names in kenya when you talk about them in these hospitals they are recognized and actually honored all over and this is for nancy omurongi again and this was done on that received on 26 march 2011 and the pcr hiv quantitative test was still very negative signed with by the pathologist dr david here from mpisha again you know they send one sample to america uh, to south africa and she again just came negative doing a pcr just two weeks ago she again went to the pgh nakuru visit center and these results have not changed the blood of jesus did indeed clear the hiv virus the determine and unigold tests are still non-reactive that means negative so indeed we confirm it. she's negative the healing of hiv aids in this ministry has humbled the medical practice what was declared as incurable forget it you'll always be positive has now turned negative and there is no mechanism i ate what he poured thing on me or whatever because there are so many in the stadium i cannot reach each and i never lay hands on them they have so many and without any mechanism was positive and now is negative I can assure you the results you will get from our VCT sites, from all our outreaches uh, clinics. You talk about PITC, that is provider initiated uh, initiated ca uh, counseling and testing. Any centre, those results as good as the ones you will get in Cambria. I can confirm to you that when you use these rapid methods, closer to 99. something percent is truly positive, if it is positive or truly negative, if it is negative. Well, what a powerful testimony. I have somebody here. I want to know what is your name? My name is Zara. Sarah, who are you? I'm Dr. Nancy's daughter. I'm her firstborn daughter. The firstborn daughter. <laughs> Let me ask you something. When do you find out uh, your mother's condition? When she got healed. She sent for me. I was at school. And so she just called me and she said, I want you to come home. This was in 2008. And I didn't expect to come home. So I asked her, is anything wrong? She said, no, but just come. I've sent you a ticket. So I came home, and then she sat me down. And then she first showed me the positive results. So I was very shocked. Did, and you, did you in your mind, uh, what, what crossed your mind? Were you seeing your mom, a doctor, uh, giving lectures, a really intellectual person now is HIV positive? I panicked. Like... The first wave was panic. Do you ask her questions? How? How that happens? Uh, explain to me. No, I just looked at the paper she put in front of me and I was so shocked. And then she said, no, Zara, let me show you something else. And then she pulled out the negative. And then I still wasn't understanding. I was still like, okay, what's going on here? And then she started explaining to me that Jesus healed her. Do you believe in Jesus at that time? I did, but I don't think I was very, like I knew that his power was that big. I think I thought it was just, you know, Jesus is love, but I didn't know he can actually save my mom from death, you know. She was very hostile. She used to come from work, shut herself in her room. She didn't want us, like, to, me and my sister, to be with her, like, around. She didn't want to share with us cups, like, you know, spoons, you know. Oh, she, you, you noticed that? Yeah. And uh, what do you, what she used to say, no, I'm old. Your kids. So that's it. You know? Wow. And then she always was asleep. My friends, all my friends can testify that Zara's mom was always sleeping. Saturday, Monday, whenever they would come over, she'd be in her room. She just used, used to shout, hi, mom. And she'd say, hello, girls. Food is ready. And that was it. You know? So when she told me, I could, now when I look back, I see really there was something, there was something wrong. 
but, but, but let me let me let me dig a little bit into this yeah. you're gonna tell me that one day your mom I, I know in her she's a, she has a really friendly personality yes. that's correct she's uh, giving lectures all these but she came one day and say you want to drink from my cup don't touch my cup yes it was like that it was just like all of a sudden we we're not allowed to touch she had her special cup it had these flowers i remember it and she wouldn't let us touch it she wouldn't let us use her spoon like if she was eating something and then you come and you're like oh mom can i taste she wouldn't let you wow so and then she used to say it's because she's old and we are young so we mustn't did you buy that did you think that you thought that was right or that was the truth I just used to think she's, I used to think you, mom, you're very weird nowadays. That's all. She's going cuckoo, huh? She's I going crazy. Think, like, I used to think maybe because we were teens, maybe we had frustrated her. Now she was just trying to keep a distance. That's what I thought. Wow. And then uh, not even talking to you, the, the, the communication was missing in the family? Yeah, it was. It's just that, like, she was maybe closer with my sister, my little sister, because mm -hmm. she would force herself on her. But otherwise, she didn't want to do fun stuff anymore. You know, spend time with us, sit with us, tell us stories. She was always in her room, always in her room. What do you thought about that? Do you thought maybe mom has a, a problem, have a deception with someone, had a bad experience, college or is frustrating? What do you think? What, what was crossing your mind at that time? I just used to think, oh, mom is mean nowadays. That's all. I used to tell her, like, mommy, you're mean now. You have a lot of conflict between she, you and her? Those days, yes. Yeah. Wow. But I do remember even she always used to buy hand creams. And she was always, always buying herself new creams. Every cream that comes, she was always buying. It's just that now later she explained that it was because she could notice her skin was changing. And she didn't want us to realize. Jesus had and healed her. She wouldn't be around. I know that. And my sister and I would be destitute because she's all we have as a parent. But Jesus is real. You have to believe in him. You have to listen to the message and the messenger because the man of God is a true prophet. Because my mom used to pray. She used to go to church. She used to pay all that money that for these stations that say pay money so that they can take the gospel to ABC but she went to a meeting and from these meetings is when the Lord touched her Jesus is there Jesus is real do you know how much how much could it cost her to get that healing how much it cost her nothing no one asked her for money she just used to go for the meetings when you're at the meetings, no one asks you for anything. When she got healed, I've never heard that anyone said she has to pay anything now that she's better. It was free. Today, there's nothing for free. You know. I know. Jesus is Lord and God is love. He loved our family. He loved, I always say, he loved me and my sister the most. Because by healing my mom, he gave us a parent. He gave us another chance to know her. I now know a loving mom, a happy mom, a mom who has joy, you know? Yes, when I was sick, my nails had become discolored. They were yellowish green, and they used to be like powder. When I would do this, they would just break off. But when Jesus healed me, I noticed the old nails are growing out, and these new nails are coming. So these are actually new nails, new fingernails, all of my nails. Very healthy. Yes. Mm. Examined by the doctor. Huh? <laughs> yes. And the spots, because you know spots here. Yeah. And they disappeared. Oh, they disappeared. I was full of black spots and blotches because the blood used to come from the flesh. And the younger daughter, Lois, she she used to ask me, Mom, why is your skin so delicate? And I would just say I'm old. Until one day she thought maybe I had cancer and she began to weep. But I didn't want anyone to know. I thought Jesus had passed me by. 
but I found out that Jesus does not pass anybody by. And I also found out that no matter how much, how many degrees I had, I still contacted HIV. And I also found out that even if someone had taken all the money on the earth, it would not have healed me of HIV. Only the blood of Jesus healed me of HIV AIDS. And I'd like to say that although I know that some people, they get HIV AIDS, it's not because of their fault. Maybe they were infected by spouses or maybe they were born that way with their children. For me, it was directly as a result of sexual sin. And I'd like to tell people, flee from sexual immorality. Let us turn away from all wickedness and return to Jesus. I didn't know that Jesus was so good. If somebody had told me to lead a holy life, I would have argued. But now I've found out that it's actually the best life because then you're free from guilt. You have joy. You're not ashamed. Jesus took away my shame. I was just searching for eternal life. But he had mercy on me and he healed me. Jesus does not discriminate. It doesn't matter who you are. Whether young, old, male, female, whatever race, wherever, whatever part of the earth, he died for us all. And the love of Jesus, I cannot even explain. Because it's not by works that he healed me, but it's by his grace and mercy. Sometimes I don't know what to say. <laughs> Here we are, we are here at the lab, at the hospital, and we have a te technician, a te te technologist, uh -huh, Eric Koich, and then we have also... Sonia Fasto, a clinical officer. Clinical officers, the ones that are going to walk us through the whole process. What happens where a patient comes, what is the process, how the tests are done, and let's walk together and go through this tour, and that way we can get educated, educated in how the process is. Okay, let's go. Yeah. So uh, this is one of our sections in the lab. This is CD4, basically immunology. And this is where we analyze our CD4, CD3s, and CD8. We have several other sections inside there. So uh, this is our immunology. This is a machine we, we are using. That is a fax caliber. We have two. Uh, we have a backup, I'll show you some uh, after this. So this is the major equipment we're using for our CD4 test. Basically, we'll give out the results for CD4, CD3, and CD8. And uh, this is our working area. We have the reagents here. These are, these are some of the reagents we're using. And uh, support equipments as well. So from here now, after we've processed our specimens, because uh, this is the area we'll, we'll be analyzing our specimens, you process the specimen with the reagents, then we do incubations because most of the incubations are done at the, it has to be away from light. So from there now we shall load the equipment, run the, uh, the, the, uh, the count, it is a fax flow, so the cells are expected to be on, a, on, a, on the after being stained using uh, a special dye that is, a, that is fluorescence dye. It will be passed through a single file, then they will be counted, depending on the various uh, stains that it will have taken, then it will be pimped on the on, on on the screen or on the monitor. From there, now we can print out our results once we've gone through that. Apart from that, you realize the area is is controlled uh, because we have to work at a strict uh, temperatures. We are, look, we are looking at it it's at 18 degrees centigrade because some of these equipment, if you expose them to higher temperatures, which usually fluctuates around here, then the machine then to to flop along the way. So they have to be in control temperatures. Apart from CD4, which we use for, to monitor our ARV patients, we have other te techniques as well, which we use as backup. That is viral load, PCR. Uh, though for those ones, we have contracts with other facilities, which we serve as a collecting center, and then we refer them. Basically, we have HIV reference lab in Nairobi. We also have uh, agreement with Walter Reed. Uh, that is Walter Reed, Kemri, Kericho. 
so they are able to analyze for us the PCRs and, uh, and viral loads. Uh, basically, when you talk about PCR, unlike uh, CD4s and the, all the other analyses which are done towards the ARV patients, we require more time for the same. Uh, basically, when the sample, we have to separate the sample. Usually you have whole blood. Then from that whole blood, we remove now the plasma, put it on another container known as DNS-free container. Then from there, when we refer it now to the reference lab, basically what they do is to, they have to have an accompanying form, which should be daily filled. It has to have all the information of our client. And in this case, because of confidentiality, we'll have coded them. So they need to make sure that the code of the sample and the code of the clan are all tallying up the names and everything else. Now from there, they'll be able now to run on that particular, uh, that particular sample that is through the processes of, because uh, we're talking about PCR, that is polymerase chain reaction. So it means we have to amplify that sample. So what they'll basically do in the reference lab, there is the amplification of the sample because we suspect in a way if it is a clan or near this. And... Uh, there is response to the ARVs, then we expect the viral load to go down. So if the viral load has gone down, then for you to pick those particular viruses will be very difficult. If it is a new case as well, to pick the viral, uh, the viral particles as well will be a challenge. So they have to be what you call primers, which you use to pick the specific uh, with minute doses of the DNA material of the virus. Then they amplified. The process of amplification includes probably incubating at high temperatures that is up to 37, uh, the, uh, 57 degrees centigrade. So that process on and off will now lead to building up of chains until it reaches such a, uh, until we have a sequence which can be detected. Now from there now, it can now be run through a system where we, you can pick the same and say now this, the viral copies of this particular viruses on this sample is this much. There's a lot of money that has been pumped from donors, okay? They are training health workers and other people to make sure that they're efficient in their service delivery when they're doing really testing of HIV and AIDS. So you could go, but because of your, maybe let me say you want to really understand everything, you could go up to the ELISA enzyme link, it's the highest. Remember this DNA PCR is only applicable to those children who are under 18 months and below. Adults are not supposed to be done DNA PCR, okay? That's the rule in Kenya. But now because of the controversy of what we are seeing, HIV, AIDS, people turning negative, then it's forcing us now to have a leeway in it and do the DNA. We pick the genetic material of the virus. I'm a clinical officer but so much knowledgeable in HIV AIDS. I could begin by saying that I have worked with CRS, the Catholic Relief Services, for one full year giving and managing HIV AIDS condition. Then the next year I moved to AMPATH, this academic model for prevention and treatment of HIV AIDS. This is a very accredited NGO or rather an organization handling HIV AIDS in this country, Kenya, which is having an affiliation. It's, 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 it's a program in calculated in Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital working in conjunction with Indianapolis University in USA. So I worked also with AMPATH for a period of one year as somebody managing HIV AIDS. Then after that, I got employed by NASCOP. NASCOP also employed me, that's now the government, the National HIV AIDS and STI Control Program. So I worked with them also for another one year. And with this vast experience, AMREF, the African Medical Research Foundation, also picked me and they trained me to go and train others. So I became a trainer of trainers on the same, on the same management of HIV AIDS, ARVs, and all the related complications and OIs. Now, as the government absorbed me now, I'm moving out of the, this NGOs, the government absorbed me, they posted me to Alupe, and next to Alupe District Hospital in Busia, there's Kenya Medical Research Institute, that's Kemri. And Kemri is one of the leading research organizations in East and Central Africa, and that's now where I want to begin from. Kemri is working with many stakeholders, very powerful stakeholders that have come in in sub-Saharan Africa to fight HIV AIDS. And I will begin by saying that Kemri is working with Walter Reed. The Walter Reed project that you had him mentioning, Kemri is working with Walter Reed also as one of the major stakeholders. Kemri is also working together with the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, program that is it, it is having its, its its headquarters in Atlanta Georgia okay so 
not only that, but there is also Ampath also is working with K Camry. And then the government itself, NASCOP, is also working with Camry. Now at Alupe, we have even the, the former president of America, that's Bill Clinton Foundation, has also established its best. The, in fact, the visit site of Camry is the Bill Clinton Founda Foundation. If you look at all these NGOs and their standards and the kind of machines they are using, for sure, if a test comes here and it passed through these procedures, I don't know who can doubt. And these patients, this, the, the people who have been healed miraculously, they have been subjected to Camry testings, by the so way. So we are talking of highly accredited non-governmental organizations here, which are doing their best. Now, if I love to go back to the patients who comes, where I work, I work for Malupe, okay? If I go back, this people comes with one statement all of them have a common behavior and the common behavior they're having is this they were exposed to the prayers of repentance and holiness are you seeing that all of them they have a common denominator and a characteristic they are possessing is this they attended repentance and healing meetings then they say they paid nothing. It's free of charge. That's the most interesting thing. Then they say, the prophet said that we repent our sins. Then they go ahead to say, when we attended the meetings, some of them, they say, we were slain down, the fire came in, and we were healed. And those are the statements you'll hear. Actually, there's no scientific evidence to prove what happened. But the scientific evidence to prove zero reversion. And that's what me I'm presenting. There is serious zero reversion. Initially, I began by saying that this medical legal impl implication to this, it's criminal in this country for somebody to stop ARVs. Are you getting me? In this country, you can be prosecuted for having stopped somebody taking ARVs when they are still sick. So, the people that have stopped ARVs, there are people who have reached DNA PCR, and on follow-up, these people, their CD4 levels that he was talking about here in this room, the CD4 levels are tremendously improved. The opportunistic infections have disappeared. These people, if you look at their 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 their, their, their bodies clinically, they are you know build up and they are doing very well. The stigma is not there, and they go back to their normality. And most of them, because their point of entry is attending repentance meeting, most of them, they do what? They, you get them they are becoming pastors. They're also telling other people because the solution for this, from the look of all this, there's no scientific evidence to explain it. The solution for this is people to repent. And please change your life. It is time. It is the time to repent and to come back to Jesus. And he's coming soon. So, uh, just open your heart to him and he will make a difference in your life. Be blessed. even explain because it's not by works that he healed me but it's by his grace and mercy sometimes I don't know what to say 